No war, no peace. This is the term that has characterized the Armenian-Azerbaijani conflict over nagorno karabakh since the 1994 ceasefire. But after more than two decades, the last three weeks of the frozen conflict have been more about fire than ice. On the evening of September 24, Armenian border villages along the Armenian-Azerbaijan state border came under intense Azerbaijani gunfire. One civilian woman was killed in the village of Paravakar, with two more being killed in the village of Pertavan. The mayor of the village of Pertaban says they are used to living under fire, but shelling, as in the recent days, had only taken place back in 1991 the Azerbaijani side also claims that Armenian forces regularly fire at Azerbaijani border villages. In this video from last year, Interfax Azerbaijan reported that their crew had come under fire at the border village of Balajafarli in the Ghazakh district. The situation was also tense along the line of contact on the Garapakh azerbaijani border. According to a statement by the NKR Defense Ministry, on September 25, four young soldiers of the nagorno karabakh Defense Army were killed near the northeastern section of the garapakh azerbaijan line of contact. The soldiers were on the training grounds behind the front line. For the first time since May 1994, 122 mm artillery was used. There were a number of wounded soldiers. According to the Defense Ministry of Azerbaijan, five Azerbaijani soldiers were killed and 19 were wounded on that same day. Since the 1994 ceasefire, Armenia and Garapakh have had about 1,000 and the Azerbaijani side about 2,000 killed, according to unofficial data, says Armenian journalist Tatul Hagopian, a specialist on the conflicts in the Caucasus. According to him, the situation intensified since the beginning of the previous year when the War of Snipers was replaced by a subversive war. Պատճառներից գլխավոր է նաև, որ Ադրբեջանը փորձում է սրանով մեկ անգամ եւս ասել, որ քանի դեռ իրենց տեսանկյունից եմ սա իհարկե ասում, մեր տարածները ձեր ձեռքերում են հայեր, հայաստանցիներ, դուք հանգիստ կյանք չեք ունենալու։ Եվ նրանք անընդհատ շարունակելու են մեզ անհանգստացնել եւ սպանել ինչպես զինվորականների, այնպես էլ քաղաքացիական բնակչության։ Ադրբեջանը նաեւ նրանով երկրորդ խնդիրն է լուծում փորձելով բանակցային սեղանի շուրջ հայկական կողմից զիջումներ ստանալ, բայց մենք տեսնում ենք որ բացարձակապես հակառակ process-ն է գնում, որքան Ադրբեջանը ավելի է գնդակոծում եւ անհանգստություն այսպես ասեմ պատճառում հայկական կողմին, հայկական կողմի դիրքորոշումը ավելի է կոշտանում։ After the latest escalation on the border on September 25, Armenia's Foreign Minister Edward Nalbandian met with his Azerbaijani counterpart Elmar Mamadyarov in New York in the presence of the OSC Minsk Group co-chairs. Following a round of talks between the foreign ministers of Armenia and Azerbaijan in New York, the OSC Minsk Group co-chairs issued a statement on September 26, urging Baku to agree to a mechanism that could investigate ceasefire violations. The statement said that without this mechanism, Quote, the sides will continue to blame each other for initiating deadly attacks on the line of contact and on the Armenia-Azerbaijan border, end of quote. According to the co-chairs, Armenia has agreed to discuss the details of the mechanism, and they are now urging Azerbaijan to do the same. On September 24, in his speech at the UN General Assembly's 69th session, Armenia's president Serge Sarkisian may have implied that in case of Azerbaijan's continuing aggression, Armenia will start the process of recognizing the independence of nagorno karabakh This, according to various experts, could encourage Azerbaijan to resume the war. As Tatul Hagopian states, Serge Sarkisian's statement will hang in the air. 
Armenia does not need war now because the current situation is favorable for the Armenians. As for Azerbaijan, it does not resume the war because it doesn't know how Russia will react. Besides, the damage to its energy resources will be catastrophic. However, war can never be ruled out. While the international community keeps calling for peace and the authorities of both countries keep blaming one another, the no war, no peace situation in the border villages continues to claim innocent lives.